Hello, I am Alfonso McGriff III, born and raised in Hartford, Connecticut, and I am here to share with you a presentation that I call Conscious Conversations. Now, I like to write and I like to share information that will contribute to me improving the quality of who I am, but also if some of the information I can share or some of the information that I share can help to improve the quality of you, then that's all good. One of the most um, obvious things that a lot of us miss is that the better we make ourselves, the better we make our environment. So as we improve ourselves, we actually improve our environment. We don't need a bunch of cooperation from everybody else. We don't need to correct anybody else. We don't need to tell anybody else what they should be doing. But just understand, as we continue to improve the quality of who we are, we also improve the quality of our environment. So some of the things, one of the things I like to do first is share with you some of the information that I use or that I've created and I use when we have a conscious conversation. The first is this book that I wrote. Um, this is my first book. It's called The Book of Abe, My Thoughts About Life and Living. The Book of Abe, My Thoughts About Life and Living. This book is actually uh, available on Amazon. So if you want to pick it up, that's cool. And when we have these conversations, there's a lot of different subjects we can deal with and we can go over. But sometimes I like to bring my books and my information and, some t and, and we can pull from these things to decide what to have the conversation about. This is also a, a, another book that I wrote. Um, this book is called When Young People Speak. When Young People Speak, 100 Questions for Ages 13 to 30. And so this book has, like I said, 100 questions. And it's actually for pretty much all ages. But one of the main things or the main reasons why I wrote this book is so that we can give young people a chance to share their thoughts, their ideas, and share what's on their mind. One of the biggest challenges we have with young people today is they are misunderstood in a large part. And I think that we don't take time out to try to understand them. We just try to tell them what to do and expect them to just do it. And in this generation, in this age, in this information age, it's not, it just doesn't work that way. Young people don't just do it because you said so. There's too many ways for them to find out information and um, kind of challenge what you said if it doesn't make sense. So this book, When Young People Speak for Ages 13 to 30, is a book that I use also when we're having conversations, pull questions from this book. And... Um, that's the name of that tune. This is another book I wrote. This book is called Social Media Quotes for Black People Only. And this book was written as a lesson in judging a book by its cover. So as you begin to open this book and read my original quotes, you'll find that none of the quotes are written for black people only. They're quotes that uh, anybody can use and anybody can find value in and uh, use them and listen to them and read them and, and make them make sense to them. So this book, again, Social Media Quotes for Black People Only, is a book that I wrote as a lesson in judging a book by its cover because this book, uh, anybody who sees value in the quotes can benefit from the quotes. And this is a deck of conversation cards um, that I created some years back. And it's 58 cards, four categories, sex, money, religion, and relationships. And these cards have a lot of interesting questions in the various categories. I chose these four categories specifically because I feel like in, in the black community and the black family in general, these are, these are four, four questions that we don't, address, you know, four categories we don't address a lot. Sex, money, religion, and relationships. So I would uh, suggest that, it, and I suggest that 
you have a sound mind when using these cards because sometimes people get emotional and things get a little out of hand which is why I created Conscious Conversations. So these are the four uh, these are the four things I pull from when we're talking about what kind of conversations to have and what we're going to discuss during a conscious conversation. I also have two books that are in production. So I've written five books and there are two books that are in the process of being published as we speak that are finished and so they'll be my fourth and fifth books. And so again my goal is to create information that can help to improve the quality of who I am and um, share information that could potentially help improve the quality of who you are. And as we continue to improve the quality of who we are, we contribute to improving the quality of our reality, our environment, and anywhere we are. So I'm going to go over the reason and purpose for a conscious conversation and what it actually entails and how I present this idea of a conscious conversation. So my ultimate goal is for us to learn how to have a conversation. Uh, many of the discussions we participate in are um, battles and debates and arguments and conflicts and confrontation. And I'd like to make a contribution to um, improving that. That's, that's how uh, I want to contribute to this society, to help us uh, become better with how we interact with one another, because I think that'll improve everything once we have a better understanding on how to uh, have a conversation and interact with each other. My area of expertise is my ability to help people understand why and how to have a healthy discussion to help people understand why and how to have a healthy discussion. There are many interactions that take place, but the question is how many of these interactions are actually uh, based on enhancing the quality of who we are, improving the quality of who we are, and making us better people, uh, uh, making myself a better person. I'll share the presentation. I'll share a presentation that offers another approach to discussions that also minimize the potential for conflict. Um, one of the things I always suggest to people is you can Google argument leads to and just hit return. And in many cases, you'll see a bunch of tragedies that people had no idea those things would happen. But when you get a minimum of two people with out of control emotions, then there's always the potential for a tragedy. It's like Russian roulette. Once two, two people are arguing and they're both out of control, nobody knows where that's going to end. So I am here to make a contribution to minimizing the potential for arguments and conflict and confrontation. The first thing I'll do is share the guidelines for having a conscious conversation. So there are 10 guidelines that I go through and um, we go through those 10 guidelines and they're challenging and, um, and interesting and many people res resist the guidelines. And what I try to help people understand is this. I'm not going to present what you're already doing or what we're already doing because the reason why what I'm doing exists is because I think there's a better way for us to interact. So what I'll share is what I think is the better way for us to interact. And this just can be another tool for you to pull from when having a conversation. You can just grab, um, you know, from this tool of what a conscious conversation is and use it to improve how you interact with people or not. But what I don't do when we have these conversations is blend in what I believe is already not working. So if I'm in here <laughs> and I'm having a conscious conversation and one of the, one of the guidelines is um, let me see. One of the guidelines is 
understanding is most important. Agreement and disagreement is not relevant. If, if, if I suggest that, and then somebody sits in the conversational group and they say, well, I disagree, then I will calmly say, well, you should leave. Because this is not an environment where we're trying to continue participating in what I think brings forth conflict. So uh, if in the future you decide to come and attend a, a conscious conversation session or one of the presentations that I call a conscious conversation, then I would ask that you come with the goal of trying to understand what I'm presenting as opposed to bringing what you're already doing into what I'm presenting because um, I will politely help you decide to leave. <laughs> because that's what I have to do uh, in order to continue with, with, with a new approach. So, um, and so after we uh, go over the, the guidelines, then we'll go over um, the models that I have. One model is what a conscious conversation is. The other model is what I call a traditional conversation that sometimes lead to arguments and conflict. So um, I'll go over those two models. And then one side, go over the models and show the difference between the two conversations. The next thing we'll do is actually have a conversation. And then it'll be my responsibility to facilitate that conversation so that it remains a conscious conversation as opposed, as opposed to a traditional conversation that sometimes lead to arguments and conflict. So um, what I'll do now, out the gate, is I'll introduce you to the 10 guidelines for having a conscious conversation. Guideline number one is we keep an open mind. In order to understand people, we have to keep an open mind. And even myself, there are certain things that I can see or hear. As soon as I see or hear it, my, my, my attitude and my disposition goes into uh, judgment or rejection. And I'm working on that every day because I want to be able to move through this reality. I want to be able to move through this reality without feeling any of it, without have, feeling like I have to have an opinion, without feeling like I have to make a judgment. I want to just be able to move through this reality just comfortably and accept what is. Just, it is what it is and let people live in their space that works and makes sense for them and move in my space that works and makes sense for me. So guideline number one is we keep an open mind. I think it's important if we have a genuine desire to understand the person that we keep an open mind. Guideline number two is we speak with respect and modesty. We talk to people how we want people to talk to us. That's very important. So um, we speak with respect and modesty at all times. Guideline number three is what I said earlier. Understanding is what's most important. Agreement doesn't matter in a conscious conversation. Disagreement doesn't matter in a conscious conversation. Agreeing to disagree does not matter in a conscious conversation. The ultimate goal is to understand or not understand. Sometimes it doesn't matter how well a person explains themselves we still don't understand and that's okay. Sometimes we're just not ready or in the position or have enough information within ourselves to understand where somebody else is coming from. So guideline number three is understanding is what's most important. Not agreement, not disagreement, not agreeing to disagree. Guideline number four, passive aggressive behavior is discouraged. And what I mean by passive aggressive behavior, when a person is speaking and we sit there and we're shaking our heads no, or we're in some physical way letting them know we disagree with them. Uh, passive aggressive behavior, we want to say something so we just keep raising our hand over and over again while a person is speaking. 
passive aggressive behavior is any behavior that's not openly aggressive, but you're aware that it distracts the speaker. So we discourage passive aggressive behavior. Guideline number five, we do not engage in personal attacks or uh, uh, words or th sayings that will, with the goal or the intent to hurt another person. So we don't engage in personal attacks and we don't say things with the intent of hurting another person. Again, these are things that lead to conflict. Guideline number six, this is a very difficult uh, guideline for most human beings, which is one person speaks at a time. Recently, a 30-year friendship of mine came to an end simply because I said, hey, every time I try to speak, you interrupted me. And if you're interrupting me, it means you don't have any respect for what I have to say. And they took that a certain way. But that's the truth. And one thing about life, when the truth is presented, is just the truth. You know, how you feel about the truth doesn't change it. The universe doesn't care how we feel about the truth. So in a conscious conversation, one person speaks at a time. One person. If more than one person is speaking at the same time, we call that a fight. And fights are discouraged. We don't want fights. So that's guideline number six. One person speaks at a time, you know. Guideline number seven. In a conscious conversation, we don't accuse anyone of being wrong. It's not a debate. We're not in the university setting. We're not in a high school setting. We're not in a classroom setting. We're not in a quote unquote educational setting. So we don't announce that somebody's wrong in a conscious conversation. We ask questions that can help us understand. And if we don't understand, that's OK, too. But we never announce that someone is wrong in a conscious conversation. Guideline number eight, everyone is right. We're not going to always be compatible. But if you come into a conscious conversation with the understanding that everyone is right, then nobody has to prove anything or convince anyone of anything. We're just sharing the information, leaving it be, and allowing people to have the opportunity to understand it or not. Even in a conscious conversation, I'll go as far as to say, if I come in the conversation and I say three plus three is six and somebody else says three plus three is seven, we're both right in a conscious conversation. Because if I if somebody asks me, how did I get six? The only thing I can say is that's how I was taught. So if somebody comes into the conversation and they were taught that three plus three is seven. The only thing we can do is ask them to help us understand how you got seven. And I'm being extreme because I'm saying no matter how extreme the difference is or what we think is wrong, at the end of the day, the goal is to continue asking questions until we can understand the person or not. But we don't uh, accuse anybody of being wrong in guideline number seven and in guideline number eight. Everyone is right. And we're only sometimes going to be compatible. We're not going to always be compatible. And that's okay. Guideline number nine, we never call anybody crazy. It's dismissive and inflammatory. In a conscious conversation, we don't do it in jest. We don't joke. We never call anybody crazy. Because... In a conscious conversation, we're not about being dismissive as it relates to what others say and what others feel and where other people are coming from. We all have different histories. One of the things that I always say is that the mind is like the details in a fingerprint. 
The mind is like the details in a fingerprint. We're all different. And if we understood that, if we genuinely understood that, we would actually understand why we have conversations. The purpose to interact is so that we can understand each other because we're all different. We would expect that people will have a different perspective or different opinion if we truly understood that the mind is like the details in the fingerprint. We're all different. We're going to see things differently and we all raised differently. There are people who are raised in the same house who see things differently because it's nature. It's, that's how human beings are. So we never call anybody crazy ever in a conscious conversation. And again, guideline number two is we don't argue. You know, when somebody's trying to win and somebody's trying to prove they know more than somebody else, those, those, that represents the foundation for arguments. So in a conscious conversation, we don't argue, man. We do not argue in a conscious conversation. So those are the 10 guidelines. I'll just recap the 10 guidelines right quick. Guideline number one is we keep an open mind. Guideline number two is we speak with respect and modesty. Guideline number three is we understanding, we understand or we know that understanding is the priority. Not agreement, not disagreement, not agreeing to disagree. Understanding is the goal. Or not. Sometimes we just don't understand. Guideline number four is passive aggressive behavior is discouraged. Guideline number five is we do not engage in passive aggressive behavior. Guideline number six, one person speaks at a time. Two people speaking is a fight. And we don't want fights. Guideline number seven, we do not accuse anyone of being wrong. Guideline number eight is everyone is right. We're not going to always be compatible. But in a conscious conversation, everyone is right. So our only goal is to try to understand. Guideline number nine is we never call a person crazy. It's dismissive and inflammatory. And guideline number ten is we don't argue. Because arguments are like Russian roulette. Two people who are out of control emotionally arguing we have no idea how it's going to end. And if we want to see some examples, we can, like I said earlier, go to Google, type in argument leads to, and hit return and just read all of the tragedies. So now what I'd like to do is um, talk about the models. I, have a, I told you I have a model of what I call a conscious conversation and a model of the traditional conversation that many times lead to conflict and confrontation. So, I'll present the traditional conversation first that sometimes lead to conflict and confrontation. So this area here is what I call the universe. And the universe is always uh, uh, presenting us with information. We're constantly receiving information from all sources. We receive information from everything. We receive information from every living thing, plants, animals, and everything in the universe. So the universe is always uh, uh, sh sharing information with us. These, these arrows is, represent the flow of information. These circles represent people. The, and this big circle represents the the, uh, the, the circumference of, of our knowledge and understanding. So that's what this is. Now, in what I call a traditional conversation, we have people hurling insults. It's just normal. We hurl insults. We interrupt each other constantly. We engage in debates. We agree and disagree. We want to win the conversation. We want to prove we know the most. Somebody's got to lose in a debate when people want to win a conversation. We have conflicts, of course, and confrontations. And like I said, these, all these things kind of represent themselves in arguments. And arguments lead to unpredictable endings. It's like playing Russian roulette. So what we have here. These arrows represent a flow of information. And in a 
traditional conversation that often leads to conflict and uh, arguments, we have information flow. And this is a group of people. And the information, some people are talking to the person next to them, and then they might talk to a person way over here. And it's a, it's a group conversation, but it's not a conversation rooted in understanding. And this is a representation of how information flows among people when a conversation is not rooted in understanding. A traditional conversation that many times lead to conflict. This is what I call uh, the, the model for a conscious conversation. So now in a conscious conversation, again, the flow of information coming from the universe to us. And as we're talking, we're sharing information one person at a time. So this is what I call the, the information is, is, is being centrally located because everyone can hear the information. Everyone can receive the information. Everyone has an opportunity to understand the information. So one person at a time is speaking and everyone has an opportunity to hear and listen and understand what's going on. And in a conscious conversation, in the conscious conversation model, we have listening, observing, thinking, learning, sharing, adjusting. One, 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 one of the most important par parts of a uh, conscious conversation and, and one of the most important things in life is being able to make the adjustment. Everything changes in life constantly. The weather changes, the plants, trees, leaves, insects, whatever. Everything is constantly changing. And if we want to truly experience life in, in a more uh, peaceful and productive manner, in a harmonious and productive manner. We have to be willing to make the adjustment. We have to be willing to adjust ourselves for our own personal peace. We can't look to other people, if they would just adjust, I would be straight. That's like standing in a football field on the 50 yard line and 100,000 people are in the stadium and you just look up and take the mic and say, hey, if you guys would just adjust so that I can be happy, everything would be okay. No. Nobody's adjusting for you or me. People do what is in their own best interest at all times, even if it doesn't work out. Sometimes we think we're doing what is in our best interest, and we, make, we find out it wasn't. But the, the objective initially was to do what's in our own best interest. So if we want personal peace, we have to always be willing to adjust ourselves, make the adjustment in our own best interest for our own personal peace. We have to be willing to grow. And when we finish that, then we know. We know from inside how to move, when to move, and what to do to continue to maintain our own personal peace. So this is the model for what I call a conscious conversation. Information flowing from us, through us to the universe, I mean from the un and the and, and back out to the universe and, and, and what we have the opportunity to do in a conscious conversation is share the information one at a time. So it goes everybody has a chance to hear it and understand it. And this is how a conversation actually takes place. I call it a conscious conversation. But this is really just how conversations have the opportunity to take place if we, if we uh, had a desire to have a conversation that's productive, harmonious and productive. So this is the ultimate goal. When I um, do this presentation, my goal is to help us understand how to have a conscious conversation. As I said earlier, my area of expertise is my ability to help people understand why and how to have a healthy discussion. And when I say a healthy discussion, what happens in a healthy discussion is we don't leave the discussion feeling bad or feeling negative or feeling uncomfortable. 
we leave the discussion feeling more enlightened and invigorated and, and even having the desire on our own to go out and learn more and investigate more about what we've heard so that we can become a better version of ourselves. So that is my presentation for you today. Again, I, I want to thank you for tuning in and checking me out. And I'll just do a quick recap. Number one, I uh, helped you understand that the ultimate goal for us is to learn how to have a healthy conversation. My area of expertise is helping people understand why and how to have a healthy uh, discussion. Um, we also talked about how to minimize conflict and conf conversation, uh, confrontations. We talked about the 10 guidelines. We talked about the two models, the conscious conversation and the traditional conversation that sometimes or many times lead to conflict and confrontation. We talked about our goal to have a harmonious and productive interaction. I also said that my objective and my goal and, and my contribution is to share this information. Um, I shared my books with you, The Book of Abe, My Thoughts About Life and Living, When Young People Speak, 100 Questions for Ages 13 to 30. Social Media Quotes for Black People Only. This book, again, is uh, 100 of my own personal quotes. And the book was written as a lesson in judging a book by its cover. And the Conversation Cards, a conscious conversation. These are the cards, four categories, sex, money, religion, and relationships. There's a lot of interesting questions involved in these cards. There's 58 cards, and each card has multiple questions. This is not a deck of cards where it's just one question on each card. It's multiple questions on each card. So sometimes you can pick one card, and the discussion will start about that particular subject, and that one card will take over for the night. That's the end of the rest of the deck, So and go many different places. So. These are the conscious conversation cards that we um, that we sometimes use to initiate conversations. And then we also use hot topics in social media. So if, people, if there are hot topics in social media that people want to talk about, when we have the conversation, ultimately it is my responsibility to facilitate the conversation so that we are having a conscious conversation as opposed to a traditional conversation that many times lead to conflict and confrontation. I am Alfonso McGriff III. I am from Hartford, Connecticut. And uh, this has been a presentation I call Conscious Conversations. Thank you.